You're welcome back. Right now we're taking what is making the headlines in our dailies. We'll start with uh, uh, Daily Trust where we have this uh, report that Nigerian airlines seek more uh, slots. Saudi carrier takes 40%. That means indigenous carriers are taking just 60%. And then we have 70% um, of NNPC's AKK gas, gas pipeline delivered, projects not abandoned, according to Kiari. Fresh intrigues as Northwest insists on Senate presidency. And then Tinubu returns, says, I'm ready for the task ahead. Okay, we also have other smaller stories there. Uh, one of them is Ben Weyman buried alive over witchcraft. Uh, this story by some other newspapers is carried as two Ben Weyman buried alive over witchcraft. Election tribunal, Falano orders back live broadcast and then two Chibok girls escape from Boko Haram captivity after nine years. That's for the Daily Trust. All right, we're well, moving on now to the next newspaper, which I believe is the Vanguard. The Vanguard newspaper leads with Sean Rumors, I'm strong, and that's the president-elect Tinubu uh, on his arrival yesterday. Sean Rumors, I'm strong, Tinubu says on arrival from France. Uh, right there, you can see the picture of uh, the president-elect. You can also find the picture of Shatima, uh, the, uh, his running mate, the mm -hmm. vice presidential um, running mate. And then you have smaller headlines. Three killed as Begi house youth clash in Abuja. Abducted Kegi, uh, Kogi Mona dies in Kidnappers Den. you find that on page six. Again, court dashes Nigeria's air's hope of flying. That you'll find on page nine. And on top, you find a rider, CBN defense forex ban on stockfish importation. And to the main story, well, one of the hottest stories today, Sudan, evacuation of over 2,000 Nigerians begins today. That is quite interesting because that is one story that many Nigerians are interested in today. The evacuation of Nigerians from Sudan. LP6 FGs not to airlift stranded Nigerians. Okay. I think that's the much well, we can take from, oh, Vanguard, from Vanguard this morning. Okay, uh, we move on to uh, da Daily Independent. Uh, AON orders move to block. AOC issuance to Nigeria Air. We also have gunmen kidnap Bielsa Rep at NPC. Then there is a story about $1.1 billion expended so far on AKK gas pipeline project. That is by the NNPC. That's what they said. Muslims in uh, Oka Yulojaisobi say allegations against him are false. Nimet tackles NL. SRC over unauthorized lightning advisory. We got that yesterday uh, that they said that lightning will be so much in May. One dead, several injured as Abuja natives and Hausa clash. Population Commission assures Nigerians of server and data safety. Then there is the story of the president elect saying, forget rumor mill, I'm strong and poised for the tax ahead. That is Tinubu. And then our president. President Mohamed Buhari to attend Gulf of Guinea uh, summit in Accra today. We also have other smaller headlines about smaller headlines, but uh, very uh, sensitive stories and very important stories. Air peace to evacuate uh, stranded Nigerians uh, for free from war-torn Sudan, and we have missing 149 million barrels of crude oil. Um, Independent inquiry says Buhari can't prove self. Okay, those are some of the headlines on uh, the Daily Independence today. And we're so grateful to have joining us right now Chris Kainde uh, Wandu, a chartered arbitrator with the UK, but he's here right now in Lagos and talking with us. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Wandu. Thank you very much. Um, is the UK Chartered Arbitrator? UK Chartered Arbitrator. 
Okay. Well, okay, so Chris, let's begin <laughs> with the story that's you know, on the lips of all Nigerians, and that's Sudan evacuation of Nigerian mm. citizens stranded there. Uh, what do you make of the fact that there is some sort of um, un unsteady ceasefire, which has been agreed three days, I think. Uh, the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, uh, mediated, and the warring factions have agreed to a three-day ceasefire so that countries can move their people out. Let's have your take on that. First and foremost, it's so nice to see an astute broadcaster in Meno. Meno, it's so nice to see you it again. It's so good to see you again, nice. Chris. To see you on television once again. So nice. Thank um, you. Yes. Yes, um, the ceasefire um, announced by the United States three days ceasefire in Sudan um, will effectively come to, uh, into place from today. And uh, but some of us are still skeptical about that ceasefire because there have been um, some in the past that have been ignored by the warring parties in the uh, in Sudan, the RRS, Rapid Response Squad, and um, the military. Don't forget that there was another uh, was a ceasefire that was agreed just before the eight uh, victory uh, celebration, um, just to coincide with the end of Ramadan uh, uh, by the by Muslims, and um, they agreed on that. But that did not. Work. There was fighting all through, and um, killings continued as of yesterday. Over 500 people were killed, um, thousands and thousands of people rendered homeless. Um, everybody's country to. Find that we're out of cartoon, um, where the fighting seems to be more intense. Um, but the United States Secretary of State came out this morning to say that there have been a consolidated ceasefire, three days ceasefire that have been agreed by the warring parties, uh, broke out by the United States, and that we hope that today we, this will be the beginning of the end of that conflict so that um, people can have the opportunity of those who that want to leave, we leave. Second to that is also second leg to that is that the Nigerian government said that evacuation of Nigerian students and Nigerians living in Sudan will commence today. Actually, um, that has been the, the law. Um, it, it, most Nigerians we are stranded in Sudan and they cannot find their way out. While other countries are evacuating us, we are we are dilly-dallying as usual, just as we did when the Ukraine-Russia uh, war started. And um, but now they say they are going to be evacuated, and it's going to be by road because there's no flight in and out of Khartoum. The nearest we can get out of Khartoum by air is through Darfur, uh, which is far from Khartoum. So, bet that Nigerians will be evacuated. Let's see how that goes. But to me, this should be a, le a lesson for Nigerians, Nigerian government. We cannot wait every time on this gets into a, 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 a situation we cannot be able to evacuate our citizens. We should be able to be very, very proactive like other countries and do the needful when and where necessary. Uh, we hope to have a, a chieftain of NEMA join us later on to tell us more about what is happening. But uh, I'd like to uh, just have some insight from you as a legal-minded person. The Nigerian government said that they needed to uh, seek permission from the authorities in that country in Sudan before they can do the evacuation and all that. And in a case like this where there are uh, two warring factions, uh, both of them government, is that even uh, something that is obtainable, that you need to go and talk to? Who are you even talking to? Is it the faction A or faction B that you're talking to? Is this the, is this the procedure that needs to be followed in conflicts like this? For future references, please. As a graduate of law, and um, also of international relations. Yeah, there are bilateral relations uh, between countries when it comes to diplomacy. But in, when it comes to war, it is very, very difficult for you to be able to start uh, evaluating and sticking to that um, uh, bilateral uh, issues because, as you rightly mentioned, there are two wearing fact, uh, factions in Sudan currently, um, the RRS and also the government, uh, government troops. Um, and you rightly ask, who are you going to wait for, or who are you going to talk to? Is it the ones that they are in government, the ones in government, or the RRS who are fighting your job? Of course, when it comes to war, there is no friends. There is no friendship. Nobody knows any nationality. You don't know. The basic thing is that you need to do all you can, whatever means it takes to be able to evacuate. But yes, there will be some level of diplomacy, diplomatic talk uh, with the government in, in, in place. There's only one government in place for now. 
uh, that is uh, one of the uh, one of the very part of. But don't forget that also this the the leader of the uh, of the RRS is also supposed to be the deputy prime minister of Sudan. So it is a chaotic situation. Um, that to me, uh, the statement issued uh, said uh, made by the minister of foreign affairs of me doesn't. Uh, it uh, doesn't make sense to me. Uh, the biggest thing is that let us look for ways. Others that have been evacuating their cities I have been, been, have been talking to government and rest of them. What I should be looking at is, you know, in the past, we have always taken the lead when it comes to issues like this, especially within West Africa and African, because as the so-called big brother, what we normally do, we go in, pick up our citizens, and even help other West African countries to pick their citizens, and bring them to Nigeria, and from here they pick them up. But now we are playing the second level. When you play a match and you have you play your second eleven, uh, the second eleven players. Then you don't get the best out of the match. So for me, without talking to the uh, to the government or talking to any the important thing is that the Nigeria government should do what it needs to do to evacuate its citizens. Either the foreign ministry, NITCOM, or NEMA, whatever is going to take Nigeria to evacuate its citizens, let us do that so that our people don't get continue to get killed in that country. Yeah, before we drop this subject, isn't it instructive that Airpeace is asking for a nod from the federal government to uh, lift the stranded Nigerians from that area? Yes, definitely Airpeace will have, have to ask because it's the state we're talking about bilateral relationship. AP cannot just fly out of Nigeria and start heading to any country without that kind of um, synergy between the Nigerian airspace and foreign airspace. Don't forget that. It's not going to Sudan. The APC is not going to fly to Sudan. It's going to either fly to Ethiopia, Egypt, or one of these member including it could also be Southern Sudan. It's not going to Sudan. So um, there must be the level of contact with the government and that government of that country so that we can have uh, um, access to their airspace. Access to the airspace is very key. And that we're going to be within the uh, government agencies to be able to do that. And what that is, it, it has happened before. It happened in South Africa. It did this in South Africa. Um, it did it uh, where is it, it, in there. I think it did this in India. Yeah, to think really that crazy. it's air peace again, Chris. Mm, yeah. To think that it's air peace again and not any other airlines, not individuals coming with their uh, jets to say, okay, I'm going to do this for the citizens of the country. Air peace again. Does that strike a chord to you? Man, no, you know, not, not hard. People get hurt now. Now, first of all, get hurt now. I've come to that. Why others are living in property? Epis, uh, especially the German economies, have had this humanitarian. And don't forget, that was why he was given a national honor last year. He was, give, he was given a national honor by the president of the Federal Republic of Now for what he has been doing and continue to do. So I don't, I don't know whatever is wrong with all that respect. It has always been APC and APC, and we must commend him for it. He said he's ready to evacuate Nigerians. But it is not his duty to move Nigerians out of Sudan. It is for Nigerians to move, Nigerian government to move Nigerians out of Sudan to a safe place where they can safely, they can safely pick them up and bring them up. Okay, let, let's just follow this up with the story that Nigerian airlines seek more uh, slots as Saudi carrier takes 40%. Now, there are six carriers in Nigeria that are sharing the remaining... Uh, a percent uh, of uh, flights that should be uh, taken. And now we have our own Nigerian air, airline volunteering all the time to go get the people free of charge and all that. Then there's something that has come up which is juicy and the whole of Nigerian airlines will share 60% uh, when only Saudi Arabia will take 40%. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? The story on the Daily Trust says Nigerian airlines seek more uh, slots as Saudi takes over 40%. Yes, that is for Hajj movement. Uh, it's mm. for Hajj movement. Yeah. And uh, they believe that um, they should be able to have more bites uh, of the cake. And uh, rightly so too. Uh, because uh, now if you are giving Saudi uh, airlines about 60% of the uh, lifting of Nigerians from Nigeria to Mecca or Medina, or Hajj, then that is not is, is not equitable, as we say in law. But look at it also from the point that uh, do we have uh, the capacity to be able to do this? Because there have instances in the past where Nigeria airlines have participated in Hajj operations and they won't go it. But that is not uh, that is not enough not allow them to be able to have. But the problem I have is that we have always been having this issue, and it's both governmental and personal. If you know the problem between us and and um, United Arab Emirates, uh, Dubai, 
um, with the number of flights that come from uh, Dubai every day to Nigeria out of Nigeria, and the number of flights given to Nigeria airlines, especially this same APs, you know, that they were not able to give APs enough um, a, a route to be able to fly into. Uh, and our Nigerian government was uh, trying to be able to broker that peace, but I think that was a breakdown. In the number, it, we should be able to uh, need this in the budget, and that is why personally, I personally, I, I don't know what everybody says. I think that there's a need for us to be able to look at, is have a second look at Nigeria, uh, whichever we look at it. It is nice and appropriate for us to have our own uh, domestic airline. In the 70s and 80s, Nigeria had the biggest airline in the whole of Africa. Now, Ethiopia is taking the lead. Now, you ask yourself, what happened? It's corruption and also the, the way we manage our own system. Now, if you, if you are looking at even we're talking on the back, look at the Nigeria, the Nigerian London route. You will see that there are hardly any Nigeria flight going into the UK presently. And you see the number of British Airways flights coming to Nigeria, other airlines coming into Nigeria and making so much money. Look at the New York, uh, New York, uh, New, uh, US New York route. Um, it, it is only Nigeria, um, US airlines, or even foreign uh, airlines from various African countries that come to Nigeria, pick up Nigerians through their own countries, and go to the United States. These are very, very, very rich routes that we should look at. So, the, within our aviation industry, our aviation um, industry and authorities should be looking at open up more routes. And that is why I commend APIS once again. APIS is going to China, APIS is going to India. APC is going to Dubai, APC is going to some other West African countries. Then we have so much, depending on oil, oil, oil every time as our only source of um, um, uh, foreign exchange is there is not enough. We should be able to open up the aviation sector so that we can have enough participants from Nigeria so that they can be able to access this international route as well and make money foreign exchange. The little, you can see how much we're owing foreign airlines in Nigeria, which left to um, Emirates dumping Nigeria for several times. Several times they come because they can't remit it. Even some other foreign airlines are having funny difficulty to be able to run like it because they cannot remit the money they make from Nigeria. So we should be looking at this bilateral relationship in the aviation sector so that we can be able to capture some of this juicy route as it were so that airline can be able to make, Nigeria can make so much money. We are not doing that as it is okay. present. All right, Chris, let's, let's move over to a story that's all over the newspapers. Uh, in fact, gracing all the front pages, talk about the return of the president-elect, Ashwajibola Tinubu Ahmed. And he says, uh, uh, we should dispel rumors of ill health. He is ready to serve. How do you, what do you make of his return and all the rumors that surrounded his uh, health? Yeah, we welcome a little con. So, Ote <laughs> Kong, according to Yorubas, Ote Kong, a little con. So, he has barely 30, how many days, 33, 32 days to go before he can take over. Um, so, uh, all Nigerians are waiting for uh, the smooth handing over. He has been elected the president of Nigeria, whether I would like it or not. Well, he, that is what it is. Except he's removed by the tribunal on the court. He remains president elect. And come May 29th, um, 2023, he's going to take over the uh, what the court and um, cases go on. He said he's elder, we believe him, and uh, we pray for, uh, for good health. But there are so many promises he has made to Nigeria. Nigeria is a, at the crossroads. We are at the lowest, lowest points we can be. In the past eight years, Nigeria has suffered a lot. And I hope that we'll be able to lift Nigeria beyond where we are present. This was how we had so much promises in 2015. Buhari came and gave us. Uh, so much hope and uh, made so much promises only for him to deny making such promises in the long run. But good enough is government is coming to an end. Uh, on May 28, uh, he signing out on 2090. Uh, but it's good to see uh, the president back. And but we pray that we hope, just as he has told us that is held, we don't want a situation that we find ourselves in 2015 and the better part of 2016, 2017, where the president was practically going, living abroad, going to London, practically abroad that way to take care of his health. That in itself affected um, a lot of uh, things in terms of governance. We hope that this president will hit the ground running. Good enough, the new uh, electorate act and the new law that was signed by the president recently has given a time frame for the president to next ministers, unlike when, what happened in 2015. Mm -hmm. We are worried for over six months to name his minister. We welcome him back and bring him the, pray for the best of health for him. 
let me cram three things into one and, and see if you can rush them off uh, the cuff, uh, 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 Chris. Now, NIMET has tackled another agency of government that gave a, a, an advisory yesterday that in May there's going to be a lot of thunderstorms, a lot of uh, lightning rather, and people should be wary of that. And NIMET is coming out to, uh, according to the story here, tackles NLSRC over unauthorized lightning advisory. And it brings to the fore the fact that uh, agencies of government don't seem to be in sync when they are doing things. The announcement from one place, tomorrow the other person debunks it and all that. And then there is this story that one person is dead, even though some uh, papers carry more than one. Uh, several injured as Abuja natives and Hausa clash. Somebody has likened this to a, a, a bomb waiting, waiting to explode. And he said that this crisis is like the Niger Delta. Something will erupt uh, someday very soon. And then Population Commission, people are just looking at them and saying, is it possible that we are really going to have this census or not? But they have assured us that Nigerians um, should know that the server and the data, they are both safe. So everybody should not worry about that comment. Uh, lightly on these three, if you may, or choose one it's in, to round it's in, up. It's realizing that we, we have three questions in one. In law, we don't do that. We take one case. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> okay. no, but we are wrapping up. We are wrapping up. One. <laughs> but I can write it up within a minute. I yes. Can it. Yes. It's okay. Now, on the issue of uh, advisory issue uh, uh, on lightning, um, whether Neymar, whichever one agency, agree or not, lightning is already happening. There was rain in Lagos two days ago, and I saw the level of light. Just so that's that with what happened in Benin State two days ago, two days ago, two people were buried alive. And if you read that story, it has to do with lightning. There was lightning in that uh, community. And some people grabbed two people and said that they are, witch, they are witches or witchcraft. They were behind that blinding, and they were buried alive. Two of them were buried alive in, in, uh, in Benin State. Before police could come, they were dead. So that is the issue. So the, um, there is going to be advisory because there will always be rain. During rain, there's going to be there's going to be thunder. There's going to be lightning. So from whatever agency it comes from, I think that is that advisory is okay. I don't know what what the problem the other agency have with that. Then coming to the issue of population, yes, the data is fine. Nothing will happen to it. And like that, you also realize that even INEC assured us more than that. And when the 2023 election came, we saw what happened. So that, has, that, 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 is, that is a situation. I want to believe them. We are going to census. But don't forget that since 1960, we have never agreed on any census. That we, it's always been disputed. Uh, some of us still believe that um, there's always uh, magic, 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 magumago in our way of censoring and also counting. But I also hope that the level of apartheid that came with this last election, which has made some people feel that they are not wanted in certain places, and decided to go to their home state or hometown to be counted, should be avoided. Stay where you are, we need to be counted, because that is what is going to be used to provide amenities for you uh, in the years to come. Okay, well, uh, sorry, we didn't break the law. We are not lawyers. <laughs> we'll take one. But I'm glad. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm a journalist as well. Okay. Oh, he is a citizen. Yeah. Uh, so uh, thank you very much, uh, Chris Kainde Wandu, for coming on the program. It's, it's very great to have you. And uh, you really gave us insight to it. And we are very grateful for that. Chris Kainde Wandu, uh, uh, thoroughbred and uh, seasoned analyst. Great to have you join us today. It's been a long time since I saw you on TV last. So good to have you. Mm. May not nice to you once again. Have a wonderful day. You okay, too. Thank you. Okay, so we'll take a short break now. When we return, we'll be looking at our major topics for the day. Stay with us.